Hospitals getting bombed, refugee camps getting bombed, civilians dying inside them is not okay and cannot sit right with me or anyone with iota of humanity inside them. Families have passed away, they've been bombed. Some people in hospitals, they thought, okay, we're in a safe haven now. We are going to get treated and then boom. How do you say no to a ceasefire? How do you say no to a ceasefire? I don't get it. Let me tell you something about him. That guy was very vocal. That's why you can't take people for their word. Anybody wants to leave the Labour Party, I think we should all form a party. Have you heard me speaking bad about Zionists? No! Rishi Sunak is just a mouthpiece. In Netanyahu, the main man, the narrative is slowly but surely changing. People are realising Hamas did what they had to do on October 7th, but killing over 12, 13,000 Palestinians is not proportionate self-defence. Netanyahu is committing genocide. Netanyahu left that meeting and walked off like a spoiled brat, like a kid who's not getting what he wants from his parents and he's walked off and he's still going and doing what he wants to do. He's not listening to no one. Let me tell you something about what I saw a couple of days ago. Someone posted something about Netanyahu saying that he's the devil himself. And someone commented saying, I am a Satan worship man and we do not claim this man. So Satan don't want him? They can't All do I'm saying is, stop the genocide, stop killing people, innocent mm. people. So we'll talk about it, innit, now? Inshallah, man, inshallah, let's go. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Riz Podcast. If you've been following us for a little while, then you'll have already seen the classic interview with my guest here today, Ahmed Yakub. I think it's safe to say we pretty much broke the podcast game with that interview. And uh, today we are going to do the same thing, but we're doing it for the sake of the people in Palestine. We're doing it for the sake of the people in Gaza, because this is a topic which has affected anyone with an iota of humanity within their hearts. And someone who, since the last interview, I believe has really, really grown his profile in the community. Someone who has become, if not before, he definitely is now a leader within the, I guess even you could say within the UK as Muslims. So today we're sat with Ahmed Yakub, and inshallah we're going to be speaking about the atrocities that have been going on in Gaza. And uh, Aki, it's a pleasure to be here again, man. Thank you very much for coming, my brother, and taking your time out and driving down here. I'm not worthy of that introduction that you gave me, but alhamdulillah. And like you said, what's happening in Palestine uh, doesn't require anybody to be of any specific religion to outline or care about what's going on. You could be black, white, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh. I have seen everybody speaking up about the issue that is, the crisis that is at hand. 100% bro. And you know what, I think um, it's very interesting bro, because a lot of people when this kicked off and throughout, I guess the last two, three decades that, that I've been conscious of this struggle that the Palestinians have been going through, there's always a sense of fear. There's always a sense of, I can't talk about it. And you haven't been of that. You have voiced your opinions from the start. So I just want to ask from the get-go, you know, mashallah, you're in the legal sector. You have your own business. So did you have any thoughts of not speaking up about this at the start? No, because staying silent in the face of injustice is siding with the oppressors. So I've had no fears in talking up about the issue and Alhamdulillah, my sustenance is provided by the Lord, by the Lord himself. I don't need no establishment. I don't need no institute. I just need the Lord. So Alhamdulillah, and as Muslims, we can't fear the weakest form of Iman is thinking something is wrong. 
the mid-range is doing something about it, speaking up about it. And the strongest one is physically doing something about it. Now, alhamdulillah, I'm speaking up about it. It still doesn't make me the strongest form. But alhamdulillah, I'm trying my best. And some people aren't, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to get into that. We're going to get into some of these people who... Ah, for, for, for lack of word, aren't doing their best for their community, whether that be the lo local community or whether it be the Ummah or I think just generally humanity. Um, so we're definitely going to be speaking about those people. Um, so starting off on that topic, bro. So yesterday, um, sorry, two days ago from the time of this recording, uh, there was a vote led by the SNP leader Hamza Youssef calling for a ceasefire in parliament. How do you react to the fact that the majority of the MPs of our country voted no to a ceasefire? I am frustrated. I am deeply saddened that we live in a community and we are led by people who are saying no to the killings of innocent civilians, regardless of what took place and what never took place. Hospitals getting bombed, refugee camps getting bombed, civilians dying inside them is not okay and cannot sit right with me or anyone, like you said earlier, with an iota of humanity inside them. I've got kids myself and I feel guilty for having a meal with them as a family after I've seen what's happening. You know, families have passed away, they've been bombed. Some people in hospitals they thought, okay, we're in a safe haven now. We are going to get treated. And then boom. How do you say no to a ceasefire? How do you say no to a ceasefire? I don't get it. I've still not got my head around it. And I don't think many people have, because I didn't I did not think. I was shocked. I was shocked at the result. Totally shocked. I did not know. I don't, I st I'm still shocked, you know. Some people abstain from voting. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't. Just, yeah. It's, it's hard, man. Interestingly, interestingly, my constituency, Slau, uh, their leader is Tandesi. And he gave many, many speeches. Let me tell you something about him. <laughs> that guy was very vocal. I shared some of his stuff on social media before. That's why you can't take people for their word. You can't judge a book by its cover. Anybody can talk the talk. But when it comes time to walk the walk, they can't even crawl. And that's what that guy has just proven. Why talk the talk? Mm. Why, why, why say that atrocities are taking place. I've I seen his speech, the one he made about the situation before the ceasefire votes. So why make that speech? Nobody told him to make that speech. He made it out of his own free will. So then say no to a ceasefire. It doesn't make sense. Kia Starmer. Kia Starmer told his front benches, put a note out, that if you vote against a ceasefire, then, sorry, if you vote for a ceasefire, you are going to lose your positions. We are living in Great Britain, a democratic country, and MPs are being told by the leaders of their parties as what vote they should take. MPs 
are there because of the people. The people have voted for them to be in the House of Commons. The party has just given them a ticket, okay? But the people have put them there. The people have been coming out week after week after week, protesting. 76% of the UK population voted in favor of a ceasefire. So we already know what the public want. So why aren't the MPs following what their voters, what their constituencies, constituents want? Why? I don't know. I don't get it. It's a topic that it's, I get very emotional about, to be fair, because of, I don't like that. I don't know who likes that. I haven't come across a person in all my years that likes death. Have you? Only, do you know what's really shocked me, Aki, has been the people who are, and, and generally it's just the Zionist people. I think one thing that we've seen is that a diverse range of people support Palestine, but only Zionists are supporting this Israeli attacks and this genocide that's going on? Only the Zionists are. I've met a, some very good Jewish brothers mm -hmm. that actually are condemning what Israel are doing. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so. And they know those are the proper Jewish people. They know what's right and what's wrong on a humanity basis, forget religious basis. We're not even talking about anything religious. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be religious. I've seen people who know nothing about any religion on social media mm -hmm. posting about Palestine in solidarity with Palestine. Uh, but there are people who claim to have faith but have done nothing to show no support. Mm -hmm. 100% man, it has been quite disgusting actually, some of the, the comments and some of the, the, the clips and reels that I put out where we're talking about Palestine, it, it, it's, it's actually shocking to see the lack of humanity that this very small segment, very tiny segment of the world has. Let me tell you something, I have been posting videos mm -hmm. and every single video where, since October 7th. Every single video that I post, be it about Palestine or be it about law or be it motivation or be Islamic, mm -hmm. there's people who have started post commenting on my videos who have got profiles, their profile pictures are Israeli flags, I don't know if you've seen it, mm -hmm. and they've started posting every single post, free Israel, free mm -hmm. Israel, free Israel, free Israel. It's like they've got people everywhere. Mm. And my posts have been heavily restricted. I think everyone's experienced that. Um, so we are fighting a uphill battle. Mm. But it doesn't mean we stop. It doesn't mean we stop. And I'm, I'm impressed with everyone who has gone out and protested mm. week in and week out. And I applaud those people. But those people now need to make, if they want to make their voices heard, they need to register themselves to vote. Mm. And they need to take this seriously. If we want our voices to be heard mm. in the House of Commons, in Parliament, then we must register to vote and we must vote for people, mm -hmm. people who stand up for our voice, mm -hmm. people who are becoming the voice for the voiceless, we must vote for them people and get them in. Because let me give you an example about parliament. I don't know if you know about parliament. Labour, for example. They need 325 seats for a majority in parliament. Now, if, how do we stop that? If independent candidates, for example, stand up 
in different constituencies and stand up against them and get into parliament, get the votes, win the elections, get into parliament, and a legislation cannot get passed without, without the say-so of those independents, Labour or any government cannot pass a legislation without the say-so of those independent candidates. Mm. And that's how we can make a difference. Honestly, that's how a difference is going to be made. Because if everybody's complaining about their politicians not listening, like you just mentioned, mm. Tandesi, someone needs to stand up mm -hmm. in that area. Someone strong, mm. someone who's confident, someone who can be a voice for the voiceless people, not just go and make speeches, mm. do it where it matters. Do it when there's a vote mm. for a ceasefire, you know? And that's how it's going to happen, and it can happen. Mm. We've got plenty of time, we've got 13 or 14 months mm. to the general election. So it can be done. So I urge the people who go out protesting, please register to vote. You know, Jacques Lahir, for that, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even consider the power of these independent parties that stand up in their local areas, because you're right, those votes count. And what was really shocking to me was when you, there was, a, there was like a, a diagram or a, a graphic that I saw of the yes votes compared to the no votes. And the number of people that voted uh, yes to a ceasefire was tiny in comparison to the votes for no to a ceasefire, meaning that the people that abstained if they had voted, then it would have made a difference. So the people that didn't, abs that, that didn't vote at all are actually the ones that I would point my finger at and blame. You know where your enemy stands when they vote yes, uh, no to a ceasefire. You don't know where they vote when they just remain silent. But I guess that was what their plan was. And one of the people, funnily enough, Ahmed, <laughs> that abstained from the vote for a ceasefire was your local councillor, Shabana Mahmoud. My local member of parliament. Your local, apologies, your local MP, Shabana Mahmoud. Yes, yeah, she abstained from voting. Mm. So she chose to sit on the fence mm. whilst all those atrocities are happening, whilst people are getting killed in hospitals and refugee camps. Never mind the adults. Every life is important, but never mind the adults. 4,000 babies have been killed. And I'm a father. Mm. I'm a father. I'm sure she's a mother. I don't know whether she's a mother or not. But regardless, you don't have to be a father or a mother to feel sorry when you see babies blown up. You don't have to. You just have to be human. So she chose to sit on the fence and let everybody else vote. And let's watch it. She kept her job. That's what she, she kept wanted, her job. Right? That's all she wanted. Now, this is what I don't get. As Muslims, we have to believe, and we do believe, we do believe that when we are going to pass away, when we are going to leave this earth, we are going to be questioned by the Lord. Ultimately, our goal is to go and pass that test. Or pass the test of life before we go there. If I was Shibana Mahmood, I would have not voted for a ceasefire. Let me tell you why. I would have resigned from my job as soon as Kia Starmer said that any front benchers voting for a ceasefire will get fired. I would have resigned from my job way before then, to be fair. I would, have, I would have resigned from my job when he started supporting Israel. He, start, he started, he was not condoning, he was not condemning what Israel was doing at all. He was sending aid to Israel. I would have resigned then, so I wouldn't have been in the ceasefire vote. And he also blocked, he also agreed with the blocking of the aid and the fuel and electricity uh, into Gaza. Into Gaza, exactly. Now, okay, the Israelis are doing a siege, whatever they're doing, is do it. they're doing it. What has it got to do with the UK government? 
Why are you supporting you for? Why aren't you listening to your people? It's as simple as that. Mm. Your people are the one who get you into the power. People don't realize this. People don't realize their own power. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, we know what to do. Do it. Show it. 13 or 14 months time, there's going to be a general election. Make sure it's known. Mm. I want to see 35 to 40 independent candidates mm. in, the mem in the House of Commons. Then we're talking business, aren't we? So, so in, this, in this area, there's 48% of the people are Muslim. And I would say that majority of those people would have voted for her because she's a, a Labour MP, she's not Conservative, and she's Muslim. Um, so don't you feel as though she's, you know, even yourself, Aki, don't you feel like you've been let down by her? Because she, like you said, they haven't even listened to the will of the people. Oh, we've definitely been let down. We got let down the day Keir Starmer blocked the aid going into Gaza or supported the blockade of the aid going into Gaza. We got let down on that day by the Labour Party. But from Shabana, for her sitting on the fence, like I said earlier, it's not acceptable at all. And that's why I made a video uh, yesterday saying that I am actually considering, I am actually considering contesting general, general elections because like you said, over 40% of the constituents in Ladywood, where we are now, are Muslims. And like I said, this ain't a Muslim issue anyway. This is a human humanitarian issue. So, regardless of that, if I was to stand up, I'm still considering it, if I was to stand up, I know the people's voice will be heard if I get ele elected. I know that myself, and the people would know that as well. Because listen, you have to have guts. If you can't speak what's on your mind and what's in your heart, then you're as good as, you're disabled. You're disabled, simple, simple as that. And I'm not that sort of a person that will just sit down mm. or stay quiet when I see injustice happening. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I'm a human rights advocate. And let me tell you about someone else who's a lawyer and he, who's a human rights advocate, Kia Starmer. Mm. The, la the leader of the Labour Party. And he's okay with hospitals being bombed. Al Shifa hospital got bombed. They said Hamas was inside. There was a map. They said these are the names of all the Hamas leaders. It was a calendar. So I don't know what's going on. Kia Starmer as a fellow legal professional, a prosecutor, a human rights lawyer, for them to just sit back and watch what's happening, it's not acceptable to me. And I would never vote for the Labour Party. Mm. And I wouldn't. I'm going to make sure, even if I'm the candidate, or I'm not, most likely I will be the candidate, but I'm not going to let my constituents vote blindly for Labour again. Why? Why should we? We should vote for people who listen to us. It's human nature, isn't it? <laughs> human nature. Someone listens to you, you're going to like them. Mm -hmm. Someone don't listen to you, you're not going to like them. So there you go. So, so I saw that video that you put out yesterday and um, you were saying I'm considering uh, putting myself up for election for uh, Ladywood and becoming the MP for Ladywood, which I think, personally speaking, I think that that was something that I was going to ask you before you even made that video. And so the fact that you made that video, it really cemented in my mind the individual that you are because I thought in my heart that Aki, you know what, I think Aki's the type of person that should do it and would do it. And then literally, subhanAllah, you put that video out. So, you know, I just wanted to say big respect to that. But what's been the feedback from, I guess, the people, your followers, 
And also because these people are local to you as well, right? The Shabana Mahmoud, she's your local MP. What's been the feedback from those who support her or even from her? I'm not sure if you've heard from her or not. First of all, I made that video in South Hall, in the South Hall mosque. And I had that thought just before I was going into the mosque. I couldn't contain myself and I thought, I'm going to make a video now. And I made it inside the mosque. And the feedback has been awesome. Hassan sitting here, we've been getting emails. Go onto the comments on my videos and you'll see it. Feedback has been awesome and actually I am considering it. Mm. I am considering it because I would like to be a voice for my people. I would like to one day say, Ahmed Yacoub went into Parliament, went into the House of Commons and spoke about what I told him to say. Mm. What we collectively as a community told him to say, requested him to say, and he went and done that. Like a MP should do for their people, <laughs> nothing special, but you know, remembered for being on the right side of history, you know, beside a joke, mm. remembered for being on the right side of history. I'm not gonna sit here and let injustice happen in 2023 uh, in a um, world where, you know, we thought, it's long gone, the days of Genghis Khan and all this brutality and all this torture. It's long gone, mm. 2023. And we're seeing it happen in Gaza. I honestly thought we've gone past that. Uh, the world has gone past that, fighting over a piece of land. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is happening. So we can't just sit back and do nothing about it. Mm. We have to do something. We're not in Gaza, we're here, so we have to do what we can here. And collectively, like I said, we can make a difference. 100%. And I think, I think the other thing is, is like, just for the sake of, let's say, for example, you, you were to go in and you were to voice your opinions, and it falls onto deaf ears, no problem. But like you said, being on the right side of history is far more important. And also, giving hope to those hopeless people who are, well, I say hopeless people, they're, they're stronger than you and I. Oh, they, people they, in Gaza. They, they, like uh, I read something earlier, they say everything nowadays is made in China, but courage is made in Palestine. Now, these people are the most bravest and courageous people on earth. I've seen little boys standing in the face of oppressors like lions. We don't get to see that in this day and age. Mm. These are warriors like Salahuddin Ayubi was. You know, these are great men, Nuruddin Zangi. Mm. These, these guys were young men, mm. but they were standing, they were firm on their belief. And that's what every child in Gaza is like. They're, strong, they're the strongest species on earth, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So before we move on to the next question, any message for Shabana Mahmoud? My message to Shabana Mahmood is you should not have sat on the fence in the face of injustice. Now, based on that, I have decided that I will be contesting the general election as an independent candidate from the Ladywood constituency. I wish you all the, all the best uh, in your political endeavours. I wasn't into politics, but... I have done my research now, and like I said, bit by bit, we will make a difference. If you can't speak up for us, I will do it. I will do it on behalf of, of Ladywood constituency. I will do it. And I won't be afraid to say what my constituents want. I will be a voice for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, bro. Inshallah. May Allah put barakat into it, man. One of the, the, the things that uh, I also wanted to ask you about that in particular, is, of course, you're standing up as an independent. Would you see yourself forming any new party and who would you want to have in that party with you? It's a good question. I would have a few people in my party. The main man, Jeremy Corbyn, I've got too much love for him. George Galloway. Jeremy Corbyn's uh, that guy that went to uh, Pierce Morgan show with him. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Don't know his name, but him. 
It's only I'm not into politics from, like that. from Liverpool, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> The lovely guy. <laughs> <laughs> the lovely guy. These people are great men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These people are great men. They speak up. Mm. Zara Sultana. Mm. If she wants to decide to leave the Labour Party. Anybody wants to leave the Labour Party, I think we should all form a party. Mr. Galloway, please get in touch. I'm here, I'm available at your services. Mr. Corbyn, please get in touch. I am at your services because I know you men are great men and you speak up about injustice and I am for that. When I see injustice happen, I will speak up no matter what. I'm not worried about anything, alhamdulillah. And one thing, I don't fear no one but the Lord. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. No, Jazakallah khair for that, bro. And uh, like I said again, you know, I really do hope and pray that even if, uh, even just for yourself as the uh, independent uh, party in Ladywood, you get that seat. But I think, you know, next step after that, or even potentially as soon as we can, you know, get some sort of party formed with these great men who, you know, sadly, being part of the Labour Party, being part of the Conservative Party, even the Lib Dems, I mean, we don't really hear too much about them anyway, but those two in particular, you're, you're always uh, fighting and losing battle because the majority of people there are, are going to be, you know, against, against the Palestinian people, against, you know, a lot of the things that we stand for. Well, Jeremy Corbyn, in the election for party leadership, was called a left-wing uh, politician and they said Labour is more middle sort of face politics and he was sort of I didn't like the way Jeremy Corbyn was treated I didn't like the way he was treated they're saying he's a leftist and this that so when they say that they are right wing they are just saying that they are right and anybody that is against them is on the left mm -hmm. But you have to think about these people who, uh, for example, G George Galloway left the Labour Party because the main reason for that was the war in Iraq. Jeremy Corbyn, just because he was speaking up, uh, he spoke up about Palestine on numerous occasions, even before this. A lot of people didn't know about this situation. Mm. That's why social media is very powerful. A lot of people did not know about what's happening in Gaza and Israel before October 7th. Mm. So now, and the narrative, mm. the narrative was always like, yeah, Hamas, Hamas are these very bad people and Israel are all, always the victims. The narrative is so slowly changing because people are seeing that the bombs are not killing Hamas. They are killing innocent civilians. Hamas are not in hospitals. Hamas are not in refugee camps. They said that Hamas operate from tunnels. So why are they going and bombing hospitals and buildings if Hamas are in tunnels? And then they say that Hamas govern the Gaza Strip. So why are they killing people in the West Bank? Mm. It doesn't make sense to me. Does it make sense to you? <laughs> Not one shred. Unless, unless you take the, um, the view from a Zionist, which is to ethnically cleanse all these people, then it does make sense because, hey, let's just destroy the land. Let's get, kill everybody. But to be fair, I don't watch them. I never watched a full speech of a Zionist. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Very difficult. And I would never get into a debate with a Zionist uh, just because... Uh, not because I would lose my cool, I'm a very calm and collective person, but it's just not worth it. Mm. Why waste your time mm. explaining uh, to, uh, I said, bees don't waste their time explaining to flies that honey is better than shit. Very true, very true. And, and I think that's what it is. When you come against these people who are extremely arrogant, extremely narcissistic, there's no point wasting your breath. There's no there? point. I've got better things to do. 100%. I've got better things to do. That's why I don't speak. Have you, have you heard me speaking bad about Zionism? No. no. I am just fully focused on ceasefire right now. Mm. I just don't want innocent people to die. Mm. Because I feel guilty. I feel like helpless. I feel useless. That's all it is. I'm not anti-anybody. I don't care. Mm. 
But I do care when people are dying. You have to care. You know, like I said, nobody likes death. Mm. No, agreed, bro. Agreed. I want to move on to um, an individual who, you know, I really just don't like this person. And she goes by the name of Suela Braverman. So just before I ask any other question, when I say that name, what comes to your mind? Someone uh, who likes to incite hatred, uh, I, in my opinion, and someone who was uh, very anti-Palestine and very pro-Israel, someone who's openly said that she has family members serving in the IDF, someone who has interests in Israel, so someone who wasn't capable of being our Home Secretary, wasn't competent enough of being our Home Secretary, and that's why she was sacked. But the agenda still remains the same. The Conservatives still exist. Rishi Sunak is still the Prime Minister. So don't get it twisted that the problem is over or the problem is gone. No, Sala Braverman was never the problem. Everybody knows. Mm. I was saying uh, to some people, and I made a video on this as well, where I said that these people are like sacrificial lambs. They go in, you've got the same message, but these people are put in and they do the most, you know, they cause all this damage, they cause all this corruption, they cause all of this... Havoc! You know, death. death! And then they go, and nothing happens to them. And then they're just replaced by another person. They're replaced by another person. I'm a lawyer. I'm registering with the International Criminal Court. And if Israel are found to have committed war crimes, Turkey are taking lawyer, Turkey are taking Netanyahu to court some Turkish lawyers in the International Criminal Court for war crimes. Now, if Turkey are found out or found to have committed war crimes, then who's committed it with them? The UK. Which would mean that whoever supported the war crimes was also complicit which means they can also be taken to the International Criminal Court. 100%. So, like I said, how we can make a difference democratically. We can also make a difference legally. I'm a lawyer by profession, mm -hmm. and I do urge other lawyers to come forward. I will be your voice again if anybody is... Sorry, I won't say to use the word afraid. If anybody doesn't want to come into the public eye, I will do it. But come and support me. Help me. I will do it. I will be the face. I will be the front. And we will go to the International Crime Criminal Court. If anybody's committed war crimes, it will be, there will be a trial and they will get found out. As lawyers, we can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. And like I said, if you don't want to come in the public eye, I'm here. I'll do that for you. You know, uh, Aki, you said two things there that, that I wanted to, to go into a bit more detail on. Uh, so just to go back to Suella Braverman, she labelled those pro-Palestinian protests as hate marches. She did. And I was there. You were there. I was at, I was at a few of them. How many, how many uh, hate, how, many, how much hate did you see in those pro-Palestinian marches? The only hate I seen, there was five of us. We was a bit late to the protest. We was on them lime bikes. <laughs> and the only hate I witnessed or seen and heard mm. was a member of the EDN saying to one of my colleagues whilst he was riding past in front of me, fuck Palestine. And then my colleague looked back and I told him, carry on riding. There's too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> But no, that's the only hate I witnessed. No, no, 100%. And, and that's, that's, that's what I wanted to discuss, actually, because she actually put into the minds of those who were neutral on the issue, but more importantly, those who were in the far right, the EDLs, etc., that these marches were there to interrupt Armistice Day. And we saw riots kick off from those right-wing individuals 
towards the police and amongst themselves, and they cited verbatim, verbatim the words of Suella Braverman. So since then, like you mentioned, Rishi, Rishi Sunak sacked her. But you said a phrase there. She incited hatred. She incited this racial hatred and, and violence. And that's why I said exactly because of that reason. Exactly. I said it because of that reason, because hadn't she called these marches hate marches? I don't think that would have happened. I don't think the EDL would have come. And on these days, the best day to have a ceasefire march, because that's what happened on Armstead's day, a ceasefire was called and weapons were dropped and there was peace. So this was a peaceful march and the London one, I was there, the one that she was calling a hate march mm. before it happened. And there was more hate from the EDL, to be fair. There's no hate from the Palestinians, or the pro-Palestinian protesters, I would call them, because there wasn't only Palestinians there. There was everyone mm. there, eh, loads of people who were there of all races. Mm. Yeah, I, I went to one the previous week, and I remember the thing that I thought was the diversity in this crowd is incredible. Amazing, and it, it makes gives you proud. you proud and gives you a sense of hope. Mm. That, no, we haven't been forgotten. The public is with us. Mm. The leadership is not, but the public is still with us. So that gives you that hope, doesn't it? It gives me a bit of hope. And that's why we need people like you, Aki, because then the people can vote for a person who will listen to them, inshallah. Well, I hope they do. If I take that leap forward, I'm only doing it because I'm a people. I don't need to go to the House of Parliament. Mm. Alhamdulillah, I'm very well known. I can make my voice known anyway. I can just put my camera on, make a video, and people can see me. I've got enough money as it is. I don't need the money. I don't need the salary for an MP salary. I don't even know how much it is. I've not, honestly, I'm, I'm, not entirely, I'm not just saying it, but I don't even know how much a salary is for an MP these days. I've not, not done my research. I wouldn't be doing it for the money. I'm doing it for my people. I'm doing it for the Ladywood constituency. So please, if I do, do it. Just stand with me. It's not difficult. I'll do the talking. I'll be the voice. You just have to register to vote and go out there and vote and just vote me in and then... I'll do the rest for you guys. And you'll remember that someone saved you in the Ladywood constituency. Mm. Better than a lot of people that have, well, definitely Shibana Mahmood. <laughs> <laughs> What's the likely, because that's a criminal, that's a criminal offence, right? Inciting racial hatred and inciting violence. So what's the likelihood that she would get convicted for doing that? Well, it depends who comes forward. Mm. It depends who comes forward. There's, there's a number of proceedings that can take place. I think one of them would be a prosecution against her, a private prosecution. Uh, but again, who is going to come forward? Mm. Who's going to do it? A private prosecution requires funding. If somebody is willing to support us, we will do it. Mm. I will do it. I'll be the face. I'm a lawyer. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Mm. No, I, I really think that, you know, What's interesting? They, they, they should be taken, they should be held accountable. Sorry. They should be held accountable for their actions. Mm. They should be spoken to, man. Is it, you can't just get away with stuff like that. Tony Blair. Mm -hmm. Tony Blair is being nominated to be, be the negotiator for the Gaza crisis. The man who invaded Iraq and killed over a million people. I don't get it. David Cameron, he's back. He's a foreign secretary now. So who's going to do it? Who's going to do what? Get someone into power. Mm. That's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. It's, it's really hard. Mm. No, that's very interesting. That's very interesting because you're right. Someone, someone needs to come forward. And uh, just, just for you to know this as well, there was actually 18 police officers who were injured in those right-wing attacks on that day. So it's Tommy and his boys. Tommy, 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 what are you doing? Come on, fix up. <laughs> you know, Fix up, man. Why, why, why? Why do you have to always call troubles for Why? The Palestinians have done nothing to you. The pro-Palestinian protesters have said nothing to you at all. So why? Why, why are you doing this for? Don't do this stuff, Tommy. You grow up. You're like 50 years old now. Going out there and causing riots. Come on, man. 
Yeah, it's very interesting. Low key. For no reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, low key, low key said about uh, Katie Hopkins and Tommy Robson said that uh, for for this Zionist lobby, Katie Hopkins is the mouthpiece and and Tommy Robson's are the fists. He's the thug. You know, so he's just, they're just both being funded by this, uh, by this entity to just cause trouble and cause nuisance. Well, they must be funded from somewhere because I've never seen them do any work. I've never heard about any work that they do. So some funding must be coming from somewhere, and it's very hard. I work like so many hours in a day. I work every single day, seven days a week, uh, you know, and sometimes it gets hard, you know, when you live that lifestyle. And I see these guys traveling, going places. Tommy, that day, I heard he came, caused a little bit of trouble, jumped in a black cab, and left. And fights kept happening behind. It just come to insight. Criminal behavior again. Nah, honestly, these people are just, uh, just uh, they need Islam. <laughs> they need, they need, they need Allah. guidance. Yeah. They need guidance. They, they need guidance. What's your, what's your take on, uh, again, our unelected prime minister, Rishi Sunak, and his stance on this? Because a couple of things that, I guess time and hindsight are very, very good teachers. So he said in Parliament maybe around three or four weeks ago when the al uh, bombing initially happened, he said that our intelligence says that this was from within Gaza. And since then, the IDF have actually come out and said it was us and we're doing it more. So when you hear these things, when you see these things, he you know, tried to give the kiss to Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu rejected him on his kiss as well. You know, what are your thoughts on uh, Rishi Sunak? Rishi Sunak, uh, like I say, he's just a, he's just a mouthpiece. Um, Netanyahu is um, the main man, uh, as I would say, in, in world politics right now. Netanyahu not only has um, Rishi Sunak's number, but also Joe Biden's. Uh, but Rishi Sunak... Again, like I said, the people are not with you. The people do not support you. The narrative is taught slowly, but surely changing. People are realizing that, okay, Hamas did what they had to do on October 7th, but killing over 12, 13,000 Palestinians is not proportionate self-defense. And people are realizing how much you are doing to support this cause. That's what the Palest that's what the Israeli call it, the cause. So they people know that you are in full support of Netanyahu. So no matter what Netanyahu says or does, you will do it. Which is wrong. Which is wrong as a citizen of UK, I don't like your behavior, and I don't think a lot of other people like your behavior. I don't want to be, I don't want to get too much into it, but the thing is, the public are totally against you now, Rishi. Totally. And I think everyone would agree with that. Because look, 76% of the UK public voted for a ceasefire. Rishi Sunak has clearly said it from, from the, the day the conflict started, from even after the first hospital was bombed, even the second hospital was bombed, Indonesian hospital was bombed, now they're saying the Moroccan hospital is going to get bombed, the United Nations buildings were bombed. Uh, even after all of that, he's made it clear he doesn't want no ceasefire, he doesn't want peace. I'm sure he's got kids too. Put yourself in other people's shoes, not physically, but mentally. What would you do? These people in Gaza are not just numbers. They have names, they have faces, they had dreams. There's a video of a young boy that I've seen and a reporter is asking him, 
what do you want to do? And he says, I want to be a football player like Cristiano Ronaldo. These little kids had dreams. They wanted to do things in life. They didn't choose to be oppressed. They didn't choose to be the victims. No kid would choose to get bombed. No kid would choose for their parents to get bombed in front of them. So humanity should prevail. And let me tell you something, Rishi Sunak. Whether you like it or not, humanity will prevail one day. It will. Well said, well said. I want to ask you about Netanyahu because we've seen, again, like you mentioned, the war crime after war crime after war crime being broken. He's, you know, let's say, for example, you know, they had the excuse of, oh, there's tunnels here, then everywhere, that's why we bombed the hospitals. But they also bombed the UN buildings as well. I said that, yeah. Yeah, so, so with that in mind, how is it possible that a person can get, and, and obviously as a criminal defense lawyer, how is it possible that a criminal committing these war crimes, and we're talking mass murder, we can say that this is a, you know, serial killers would look at this person and think that this is their idol, right? Over 11,000 people killed, including, like you mentioned, 4,000 children, babies that have been murdered, slaughtered in front of all of our eyes. How is it possible that he's able to get away with this? The United Nations are like a toothless tiger. Again, they talk, but they can't take any action. What have they done to stop this? Nothing. The president of the United Nations said, Netanyahu is committing genocide. Netanyahu left that meeting and walked off like a spoiled brat, like a kid who's not getting what he wants from his parents. And he's walked off and he's still going and doing what he wants to do. He's not listening to no one. That's what they say, Joe Biden, you've, you've let your leash out too long. But it's the other way around, really, the way I see it. Like I said, Nathan Yahoo is the man. Yes, it's crazy. It's crazy. because Let me tell you something about what I saw a couple of days ago. Um... Someone posted something about Netanyahu saying that he's the devil himself. And someone commented saying, I am a Satan worshipper and we do not claim this man. So, so there you go. I read that. That's mad. That's actually crazy. So Satan don't want him? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, inshallah, Allah will deal with him. So you can't say he's Satan even Satan don't want him. <laughs> no, it's a very sad situation that these people are getting away with it and they're doing it with a smug smile on their face as well. They're getting away with it, but we believe. Mm. We always believe. That we are here, which is true though, we're only here for a temporary time, 60, 70 years. We're going to go, we're going to die one day, the world will still remain here. And then the judge is just, Allah, then we'll, we'll see. But people should not be getting away with war crimes. So these Turkish lawyers that have taken, uh, have filed a case against Nathan Yahoo, I applaud them, and obviously I'm going to do my bit from the UK side, and if it gets to court and funding is required, I will arrange funding personally. If I have to sell assets, I will, just to get Nathan Yahoo to court. Liberty HQ is an organization that are taking Salah Braverman to court for war crimes. I've been in touch with them as well. If they require any assistance from me, I am available, I've messaged them. I think, I think my office have sent them emails as well. So anybody, I'm available. Anybody wants me to be there, I will be there. Because like I said, I don't want to be on the wrong side of history. I don't want to stay injustice in the face and just stand there and do nothing. I've not been raised like that. I've not been programmed like that. 
of my mom used to tell me to say sorry to people when I used to nudge them or be rude to them. I'm not used to people just bombing people and saying nothing about it and acting like it's okay. I'm not used to that kind of stuff. Honestly, I'm not used to stuff like that. My mom and dad brought me up differently. My mom would smack me across the head if I just speak to someone rudely. My mom would still, still look at me if, if she, and, and I can tell when my mom looks at me angrily, I know she's getting angry, so I can't do certain things. We're brought up in a different way. We're brought up to feel pain for others. We're human, we're programmed to do that. So people who don't feel other people's pain, I don't know, don't know about them. To be fair, I don't know. I want to ask you uh, just a couple more questions, just about a few people. Um, so the first person I want to ask you about is DJ Khaled, who is a Palestinian man. who has got over 40 million followers on his Instagram. And okay, it's one thing to continuously post and continuously talk about these things, you know, the way that you have, the way that I have as well on my social media. But the man has remained completely silent. Not only has he remained silent, but he's also blocked comments on his social media posts so that people can't even express their opinions on his posts on his social media. We've seen, you know, on Halloween, he was doing a party. He's been selling new trainers. He's been going golfing. So what do you think of a man like DJ Khaled? A man like DJ Khaled is this Spineless man. This man has no shame. He was celebrating his son's birthday. Uh, on his Instagram, I seen videos. And my thought on my head straight away was, in my mind straight away was, what about them kids that are dying in your homeland? They're dying in your homeland. And your masters have got you in such a grip that you can't even say off to them. You can't even say free Palestine. They make you do advertisements for McDonald's when you're sitting there and you're saying, yeah, McDonald's, fill of fish, fries, yeah. They made you do that. Be ashamed of yourself. I don't know how much you're getting paid. You're a wealthy man, brother. You are a wealthy man. And the only reason I'm calling you brother is because I'm sure you're Muslim. He's a Muslim, isn't he? Come on. So, you're doing it for money. You've got a lot of money. How much more do you need? The guy's worth about, I don't know how many millions. How much more do you need? You could leave America and go live somewhere else. Go live in the Middle East. Somewhere with that money and retire for the rest of your life. Your kids, kids, I've got enough money to survive. But let me tell you something. We can't do nothing to change you. But let me tell you something. Imagine meeting or imagine dying and you go and meet the martyrs and you're coming and the martyrs running up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, these are the people who spoke up for me. These are my brothers and sisters who spoke up for me despite pressures on them. And then these are the people who were too afraid. They were more afraid of their masters than you, O oh Allah. I don't need to say much more, man. Everybody's seen everything. My words ain't going to make a difference. But I hope that brother changes. He needs guidance. He needs Islam. He needs someone to sit him down and talk to him. Because I don't know why people... Like, I get fed up about talking about Palestine as well sometimes. Not in that way, but you think to yourself, because you can't make a difference. But then uh, that thought keeps going into my head. Imagine just these guys, one of them just testifying. I, I sometimes think to myself, when I was speaking about Palestine, I think to myself, 
imagine one of my videos just goes viral and one of them see the kids. That's enough for me, man. I don't want anything else. That's enough, but people don't realize, you know. It's one of those very but beautiful and powerful at the same time, bro. I, I didn't actually even consider that, but you're right. There will come a time when he's going to be judged. He's going to be standing in front of Allah and witnesses will come and speak either for him or against him. You know, even our own body parts will speak for us or against us. And, you know, he's typing away, he's golfing away and his limbs will say, yeah, at man. the time that you should have been speaking about your brothers and sisters and trying to help, you're going golfing. So it's sad. I feel sorry for him. I don't want to even say anything bad about him. <laughs> That's um, I feel sorry for the guy. So, and do you know what's very interesting as well is that he's got a cousin called Fadi who lives in Dubai. And since this started, they've now actually stopped talking. And he's, they've unfollowed each other on Instagram. Uh, he even posted a picture a few weeks ago of, uh, of DJ Khalid with, I'm assuming, an Israeli man. And he wrote, this is the most disrespectful picture of the year. So this is actually now causing divisions within his own family. And this is a brother that he was very close with. It wasn't like a, someone, some relative. They were friends as well. So, you know, this is a person who's been in his ear, been speaking to him, and uh, it just hasn't penetrated his heart, subhanAllah. See, Kanye West was saying that the owner of the company that DJ Khalid works for, his producers are Zionists. So that is the reason, isn't it? That is causing division between his own family now. And like I said, like I said, this cousin of his or his friend of his, Lives in Dubai. Why can't he go and live in Dubai? He's got enough money. Invest in some business or something. You can give me the amount of money he's got. I'll double it for him. In a year, I'll double it for him. He thinks he needs all this music to make money. There's other stuff. You can make, make money in thousand other ways. Come on, fatty man. It's fun, la. I want to ask you about. Um... No, and, and by the way, completely agree. I think, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's very sad uh, to see his, his lack of action on this topic. But one person, one brother that I've seen speaking up unashamedly and, you know, ev even, even posting very raw images, very raw videos on his social media, someone who has a lot of big contracts that he could potentially lose has been our brother Amir Khan. So I just wanted to ask My brother Amir Khan, I got too much love for you. You're a great guy. Your missus, Faryal Maktoum, as well. I've seen her statement as well that she lost out some contracts potentially. Now, I would expect that from you guys because I've met Amir Khan before. He's a lovely brother. I know him. I've spoken to him before. And the thing is, I would expect something from a great man like you, man. Keep it up. Like I said, I'm with you. Any support you need, with you guys whenever you want me. And uh, just speaking about Faryal as well, she received death threats. Did you see that? Yeah, I've seen that. So it's fun. And she carried on. She, she didn't stop as well. Carry on, my sister. Carry on. Allah's going to reward you guys, man. Allah's going to reward you guys. You don't need nothing else. My last question to you, Aki. There's 2 billion Muslims in the world. There's around 30 Arab nations. Forget about all the other Muslim countries in Africa, etc. There's around 30 Arab nations. We've seen, you know, certain countries have said, you know, we will stop ties with Israel and countries like Saudi Arabia said, well, we'll cut ties with you if you cut ties with Israel. Countries like Yemen have said that we want to attack Israel and Saudi said, well, we'll stop all your bombs. Not focusing specifically on Saudi because we could say the same thing about Abu Dhabi, we could say the same thing about Dubai, but, you know, just looking at how many Muslims there are in the world and, and how powerful these nations are, what are your thoughts when you see these people look, doing speeches and no action? Look, my thoughts... Okay, the issue about them intercepting the Yemeni missiles and stuff, that's a separate issue. They could resolve this, the Arab nations, without any war. They could cut off oil supplies and make a huge impact. Qatar could cut off gas and bring America to a standstill, Israel to a standstill. 
They don't know their power. They don't even need to go into war. Nobody's asking them to go into war with anybody. They're just saying, Jordan, for example, their neighbors. So people are just saying, use your power. The Arab nations are not understanding how powerful they are. The Former president or prime minister of Israel said one night when we bombed Gaza, we couldn't sleep because we thought the Arab nations are going to come and attack us. But then we realized that they are sleeping. Now, come on. I don't need to say too much, but the protectors of our religion seems like they are protected by people who are not from our religion. Yeah, subhanAllah. I think that was one of the most powerful quotes I had as well from the, the former Prime Minister of Israel from I think the 50s. They attacked Al-Aqsa. Yeah, I've I seen that ages ago. Uh, but now that you mentioned this Arab thing, like I said, people was unaware. That's why one thing is this. We have, we are winning the media war. We are winning the media war. Trust me. I've not seen it like this, happening like this. Of course, we've had awareness, but a lot of people are aware of this now. And it wasn't like this in previous attacks. I'm not going to call it wars, because a war is when one side has an army and one side doesn't has an army. Attacks, previous attacks. It wasn't like this. Only a few people knew. But now everyone knows. So the narrative is changing. So keep doing what you guys are doing. Keep doing, sharing. You know, before I go, I'd like to just uh, say a, mention a few names that are dear to my heart and are doing work for the cause. One of them is Sean King on Instagram, Khalid Bayoun, Low Key. There are a few more, of course, Motaz, Aza. Mohammed Hijab, there's by Palistia, the journalist, there's Bisan. I've been watching everyone closely, and these are our heroes. These are our heroes. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, guys. May Allah bless you all. I'm with you guys. Whatever you need, whenever you need. Of course, the UK brothers, they will know me anyway. Whatever you need from my side in terms of anything, a voice. Legal help, financial help. I am there for my brothers and sisters, wherever you call me. Remember that. Aki, Zakhlaq Hammer, bro. I really, I really wished that the, the the second podcast that we did would be about you know the success of the Love business it. and and all these things. But it's it, this has really taken over the hearts and minds of anyone again with even a shred of humanity. I can't focus, I can't function. It's very hard to function on work, focus on work right now, I'll be honest with you. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Even though I go on like, uh, you can't get distracted, you can't get distracted, you have to, but when you see kids dying, man, you can't. Man. Yeah. No, subhanAllah, man. I just want to say, look, uh, not only are you running a very successful law practice, but you're also now considering going into politics. And I think one of the things that, you know, inshallah, inshallah, those shaheed will speak about is the fact that you spend this time to try and spread a message, to try and spread awareness for the pain that they're in, inshallah. And uh, yeah, subhanAllah, I, I'm, I didn't even realize this, but I'm choking up just thinking about that, that vision that you gave of those shaheed, you know, on the Day of Judgment, subhanAllah. So, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. All right, let's finish it there. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. Oh, make sure you do because there ain't no defense for not subscribing to this man's channel. You remember that? Love, love, hair, bro.